I'm going to start with the interactive one because I think your data doesn't look totally reasonable after the transformation. So I just want to see before. Yeah. We did that one early in the morning and then later on I went and did it on the old program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you still see me okay? Oh dear. Okay, so I put your data in a folder on my desktop. Okay. Um, it's right here. So I'm just waiting for it to initialize and then we can start. Oh, wait, that's not what I meant. Because the thing about the old notebook, I don't know, whoever was working in it before me and gave me the template, like, set up a bunch of, um, like, presets. Yeah. Yeah. So when I go through it, there's very, like, minimal manipulation unless the data file looks like this one's not very good. Okay. Well... We'll talk about what it looks like and what my recommendations are. Can you tell me a little bit more about um, the types of event analysis you want to do after you've detected your events? So all we do is, um, in the old program, he was saying, like, you can do BLAST if you want or you don't have to do BLAST. He said it doesn't really make a difference. Basically, I mean, my, my actual understanding of this analysis is very limited because I got thrown into this because we need this data by this date, etc. Yeah. And uh, so what we do is we try to get a text output, an output file, and it says like RRGS something dot text. It's like, uh, it's a text file. You get all these .csv files that you can plug into Excel and then like two text files. And one of the text files, we plug into a program called GHRV and we run like interpolate and then we look at the point care because the point care plot's the only other thing I think we care about. And then we um, do a frame-based evolution. Okay. I don't know uh, if that helps. Yeah. <laughs> So I can do the Pionkare, and then um, the frame-based evolution basically segments the uh, the interval data for a bunch of measurements over time. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have that built in, but depending on what you're looking for, we can do some of those things. Okay, okay. so this kind of looks like a heart rate. That's good. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're going to skip the power spectral stuff on the raw signal. I don't think you need it. No, definitely not. 
Um, we're not going to load your old settings. We're going to do them together by hand. But I'm going to pull up the settings file you gave me so we can compare them. OK, here we go. So you didn't want to do a linear fit. Totally fine. Don't think your data needs it. And pass. Um, all right. 30, 100. Four. Those are reasonable numbers. Let's see, go away. Video one and four. Let's see how that goes. Okay. So when I zoom in your data, it's completely destroyed. So one of those things doesn't look right to me. Let's try a smaller Savitsky delay window. Because it should still kind of look like a heartbeat. Um, that sinusoidal whatever uh, doesn't look right to me. Uh, so we'll try 101 and see how that goes. The hey, signal got dropped. I'm in a parking lot, so the Wi-Fi is not great. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm still here. I'm playing with your Civisky Golay settings. Okay. You don't have to do Civisky Golay if you don't want to, if your signal is, like, not super terrible. Um, actually... So Bandpass removes noise? Bandpass removes specific wavelengths of... Um, of the recording. So this is what this looks like if I don't use Civisky Golay, but I run it through the bandpass filter. So you can see okay. that like your signal is really clear, like your um, PQRST complex is pretty dramatic um, at each at each point. So uh -huh. it's, it's really clear. And it looks like we've got Savitsky Golay cranked up a little too far when we ran it before. So let's keep turning it down until we see something we like. Your band class is reasonable to me. Um, I had 101 last time, so let's try. All right, so that's starting to look better. Right, you've got nice big events where you've got events, and you've got short little moves where you don't have events. Um, okay. And the. Uh, um, R S the QRS part is all positive now, so you don't have that negative dip, which makes it easier to detect just the heartbeat. Try one more Savitsky Golay setting to see if I like it better. Um, we tried 25 last time, so let's uh, see if 19. Stupid internet. So what did you put the Civitz Hugo lay at? Uh, currently it's at 19. So you can see like how clear your events are um, compared to your noise, which is kind of like down here. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so you had the Civitz Hugo lay turned up a little bit too high, which is why it looked sinusoidal. All right. Your data is pretty flat. So I'm going to recommend that we use the static um, thresholding. You guys used linear before, right? Uh, no, we've been using static. OK. I like static, especially when your data is like real flat like this. Uh -huh. um, static. OK, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to save this image for you guys so you can have it forever and ever. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and so that this is going to be pretty easy. I lost you again, but start again at pretty easy. Those events with event detection. Super easy. Sorry? Super easy. It's going to be really clear. 
All right, so here are your settings right now for what we're using. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to go ahead and start peak detection. So you used a delta of really tiny. Um, I think we're going to do uh, 0 0.01 for now, see if it looks OK. And we'll say a peak has to be bigger than 0 0.02. And it can be as tall as it likes. All right. So when I zoom in, there you go. We see your peaks. They're real clear. Valleys on either side. That looks pretty reasonable to me. Um, and these little bits down here don't Those have peaks on them. Right. Which means that my delta value isn't too small. If you saw peaks down here, that means you have to make your delta bigger. Okay. So what did you put for your minima and maxima again? Or uh, how you choose that kind of like, what is, what does that affect? Um, it basically just filters the peaks after they're detected with the Delta, which helps you remove like outliers. So I know that no event go. is going to be smaller than 0 0.02. Mostly because I know that's about to be my event threshold in a minute. And then I said, there's no noise in this sample. Everything's kind of the same height. So I set the maximum to greater than this number because I know that I want all of the peaks on the bigger end. Like I don't care how tall it is. Give them all to me. Okay. You want to me? Threshold. We said you said your static was 0 0.026. That seems reasonable to me. So we'll stick with it. Um, minimum inter event interval. We'll make that small. Um, um, minimum duration, it can be as little as zero seconds. And then maximum duration. Okay, so the last time you set maximum duration to zero, which would basically filter out all of the births, because you said no event can be bigger than zero seconds. So no event can be bigger than two seconds, which should filter none of them. All right, we know that there's going to be one event per burst. Uh, do you want burst area? Uh, no, we don't need burst area. Okay. Uh, hang on just one second. Make sure they're ready. Have a good day at work. <clears throat> Okay, so this looks, I can already tell that I think this works really well because this number, um, which is burst start and end, which are the boundaries, is the same number as how many peaks you have. Okay. So they're probably capturing the same things. All right, so when I zoom in, there we go. Got your bursts, got your peak, everything looks beautiful. You could probably lower that threshold if you wanted, but you don't have to. Okay. Um, I'll save this picture for you too. Okay. And then we're going to save all these files. And it prints you like a little summary of what happened. Um, so you know which things you can plug into the analysis afterwards. Now, we probably want to do intervals. That's like the thing you care about the most. Right, the RR intervals, that's the thing you're into? The, yeah, 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 that, that's exactly it, I think. Where did you... Okay. Yeah. So we're about... We're about to do the peon Um, and I know which things I can do analysis on because it's printed right here in the summary statement, which you get after you save all your files and settings. So it tells me 
that from peaks, I can analyze the amplitude and the intervals. And from bursts, I can measure all of these things. Okay. All right. So um, you can batch process the strong flows if you want. So it'll like automatically generate and then save out all possible Pionkarets. But you just care about one, so we'll put it in here. So you have to say bursts and then intervals. Your key will always be mean one. Okay. And there's your Pionkaret. That's so weird. That's... Hmm. Let me try a different one. Well, there it is. Um, it's very regular. Okay. And then SD1 and SD2, right? Those are the values you need. SD1 and SD2, what are you? Those are the, um, the little ellipse inside, kind of measures the spread. Okay. They're numbers that GHRV generates for you. Oh, okay. But I'm gonna run all for you just real fast to show you that it's pretty reasonable to do. And you can see um, it'll just print and then save out all of the SD1 and SD2 values for you um, from all of the different measurements. Um, and it'll save out the plots automatically. So if I go in your output folder, uh, under Pionkare, you can see all the different plots it just generated for you automatically. And then you have two little text tables. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but what about the RR interval text file? Can we generate one of those? Uh, so everything you measure gets saved out, and the RR intervals would be under peak results, and the intervals are right here. But this is a .csv file, not a .text? You can save it as whatever you want, so you just save it as. CSV to text is pretty easy and common. Um, Text. Um, now, if you're going to shove it into GHRV, mm -hmm. don't actually take the amplitude. Sorry, you don't take the amplitude or the intervals themselves. You take time. Okay. Because what it does is it plots when each event occurred. Right. So what you would do is you would make a text file containing only this column. Okay. And all I, need, so I could just copy paste that that column into a text file, and that's that's all GHRV is reading is that column, really? Theoretically, which is why I don't use GHRV um, anymore. <laughs> yep. All right, so here's your frequency plot. Okay, that yeah, that looks a lot like uh, like that. 
There you go. So you can make it in this. You don't have to make it in GHRB. It makes it right here for you. So um, you just make everything in the in the Pyth in Python now. It, there's a little section. Okay. Frequency plot. So peak intervals, I know, is the thing you care about. Yeah. Um, you can do power spectral density on the frequency plot, which is a thing that GHRV, GHRV does. Um, I think these are, in fact, the settings that GHRV uses. Mm -hmm. Peaks. Let's say intervals. Oh, oops. I have to run this first. Otherwise, it won't go. So there's your power spectral density. Okay. Um, we can save it. I, I, what does that tell me? I'm not quite sure what a... Uh... Power spectral density, um, what it does is it basically turns, it looks at your frequency plot and says, this is the power of the signals at each frequency that are added together to make your signal. Okay. And then you can get the power in bands right here. This is another thing that GHRB does. Um, you can get sliding averages. I don't know what, uh, <laughs> what that does either. Uh, so it's like, say you wanted to know what the average interval was over time. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, because you care if it's changing. So at each 30 second interval, this is what the average is. Oh. Now, um, so can you do, you can't do frame based analysis in here, right? No, but you can do frame based analysis um, if you want on your. No, I can't do frame-based analysis for some things. So frame-based analysis is this sliding average. Um, it just uses, it just, I, I have a limit on which things can go in it and how big the window is. Right. It has to be like a certain, well, I was getting an error when I was plugging into GHRV yesterday because apparently the files that were converted for me are not long enough. <laughs> yeah, they, have a bunch of restrictions. yeah so is there i was gonna ask you is there a way around that because i have a few files that are like two frames long and they you have to make your frame size smaller okay right so like if ghrv says that like your frames are too, like if there's not enough frames to do the analysis on, you make them smaller and make the overlap bigger so that you can get more frames. How do I do that? <laughs> Is that a setting in GHB? I think so. Okay, I can play with that then. Cause I got all the way to the end yesterday. I was like, Eureka, I figured it out. And then, <laughs> no. No, Um, depending on what you're doing with the, frame-based analysis, you know, you might be able to skip it. Um, mm -hmm. It really just depends. And if you're any good at scripting, you might be able to use some of these functions to loop through them at different chunk sizes, which is basically what it's doing. Well, I don't mean to brag, but I've gone through 10 lessons on Code Academy in Python, so. I'm just saying that you have all the skills that you need. All right. <clears throat> um, do you need histogram entropy? Um, I think, honestly, G well, GHRV does, seems to do all this stuff for me. But, uh, I mean, it, I guess it would be good to do since it, it appears that histi histogram, heart rate histogram is in GHRV. I'm looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. So basically, this extended notebook you've made just does all, just about everything that GHRV did, except better because there are fewer restrictions. 
Yeah, and then they kind of do similar things. There's a couple of things that I do that I can't do, and there's a couple of things that it does that I can't do yet, but that's mostly because development is paused for now. Oh, right, okay. so here's your histogram of your intervals. Interesting. Yep. And I'm okay. guessing the reason why it's um, so precise like this, which also is why your Pioncare is like nine points, is that your data is very coarse, like you're not sampling very often. So the um, so I can't even measure in between those points because your sampling frequency is so low. What, is, what does that mean, my sampling frequency is low? How Just often that. you collect a data point? So that's that would be something that's happening when I'm running the experiment, right? Mm -hmm. And I always recommend as many data points as possible. So does that mean I should bump up my... Um, did, did you ever use Lab Tutor? No. Or did you use... Okay. Lab Tutor is a program that we use, and then there's uh, a setting uh, uh, by cyclic measurements, and the default is set to 1,000, and we always lower it to 100. I think that might be... Oh, that's horrifying. You should definitely leave it at 1,000 or greater. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Like, <laughs> that, um, like, imagine that you're making a movie... Right, but you decide that, um, you know, I don't really need to make a high quality video. I don't need something like a thousand frames per second. I can probably do it at a hundred or ten. Your video is going to look really choppy and crappy because you don't have enough data for the eye to like make it smooth. Yeah. That's what's happening to your heart rate signal. That's hilarious. The yeah. more and more, the more time I spend, the more time I, the more things I find out were, were bad. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things where it's like when you choose to take um, low sampling rates like that, you're yeah. saving space, right? Because you don't have as much data you need to store because the data files are small. Um, okay. and depending on you know how long your recordings are or whatever, you want to be able to save data in the smallest form possible. Um, but that means you're losing information. Right. Which is never good. Right. Okay. Uh, just a quick question to rewind about Blast. Uh, if I don't want to use Blast, so Blast is, a, I have to input Blast settings or I'll get an error, right? Or, sorry, not Blast, Burst. Yeah, you have to do, you have to do Bursts or else it'll be unhappy. Um, what are some good default burst settings or ways to null out burst if I'm not trying to use burst? Um, I don't think data sets need burst unless you have a recommendation of how to use burst. I read your, I read through your whole tutorial, but it's still kind of... Uh, Basically, you can use bursts as an alternative way to measure um, time between, cyc between cycles. So the equivalent in uh, burst measurements for our art intervals is total cycle time. Okay. So peak to peak is one measurement, and start to start is another measurement. Right? All right. So they measure kind of the same thing, but using two different methods. It's a way to check to make sure your stuff makes sense. Um, right. You can also get a bunch of really interesting measurements like duration, right? How long is each event, not necessarily how long between events, right, which tells you things like, um, you know, if the, if the beat is prolonged or unusual. Okay. Um, you can also get area, which does, uh, it gives you sort of a measure of not only time, but amplitude, right? So it gives you, um, gives you a sense of like how strong the signal is along with how long it takes in time. I mean, it really depends on what you want to do with your data afterwards, but I always, again, the, I always recommend doing everything. As far as good values, I would say that um, since you're using static, picking a good threshold value should be easy for you. You just look at the y-axis and be like, I want to draw the line there. 
And then for everything else, it's all filtering, right? How do I want to exclude or include things? Okay. Right. So, um, minimum would be zero. Don't exclude anything based on how small it is. Maximum, make it like a whole number or larger. So you're not excluding any events based on uh, duration at all. And then one for minimum peaks per burst is a pretty good number. And then um, skip area if you don't want it because it takes a little bit of time because for this file, it will be doing 967 integrals, which takes some time. Jesus. Right. So if you don't need it, don't do it. Don't need it. Nope. We're good. So those are my suggestions. And what I'm going to do is I'll send you the settings file that I just generated. Um, so that way you can choose to use exactly these settings if you would like. That would be absolutely wonderful. Now, and I feel the like settings hmm? where it says what settings? Uh, it will say this one right here, where it says settings, and then it's got a long timestamp after it. Okay. That's the settings I made today, right now. So if I oh. open it, there they are, what I used today. Perfect, perfect. Um, now, I know that your PI and my PI have talked about some other entropy measurements that they might care about. Um, okay. It's like an it's another heart rate variability thing that they're sort of into. Histogram entropy, approximate entropy, and sample entropy. These are things that um, GHRV will do both either on the whole signal or parts of the signal. You can run it yourself in here, right? So you can get um, approximate entropy on your intervals and you can get sample entropy on your intervals as well. Oh yeah, and I, j I can just go through and run those, or do I need to, okay, event type, peaks, means, mean one, or no, intervals? Okay, um, will that be included, like that little, those times that you went in and made those small little modifications to the code? Because I, I foresee that's where I'm going to get lost when I try doing this myself, is I'm going to forget to do something small like that. No, because these are in, um... Um, this locally, I'm not going to push this back to the repository. Um, but I'm recording this thing that I'm showing you right now, so you can watch this a hundred times. Oh, great. perfect! Yes, you're recording this. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I figured that, that that this would just be easier than me trying to record it later. Very, very, yeah. That that's great. Okay, so I mean that's the main one, and then I guess all of these sort of have the same format. You have to tell it you know, what you want to do the analysis on. And some of them, um, the ones that report uh, support batch processing um, will say that you can set knees to all, right, which will let you do it on all of the peak measurements or all of the burst measurements, which is handy, and it just kind of, like, dumps out a bunch of information for you. How long are your recordings on average? Um, the actual, okay, this, this is what kind of baffles me because um, I, I get lost when I have to send the files to Kurt Spurgeon, Dr. Spurgeon, and then he sends them back to me as text files. Mm -hmm. And this is that Power Lab software that I need to get from Dr. Wilson. Um, but apparently, like, when he uses that software, he takes a snippet of the recording. Mm hmm but um, the recordings we do, I, I make sure we have at least 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes of uh, just like solid signal when the, the animal is under. Okay, and this is like an example of a snippet he would send back to you? Yes, the, this, is, this is the real, this is what I'm trying to analyze. He finally sent that to me last, uh, la the night before last. Okay, and this file uh, is barely two minutes long. So... Which is pretty so, short, which tells me that you that doing the um, the frame based analysis, which is what GHRV, GHRV is doing, um, might not be very interesting for you because you, you're giving it so little time 
right? How much change is going to happen in two minutes? Well, it's probably not going to even let me do a frame-based analysis. I was only able to do a frame-based analysis on one of the files that I analyzed. I, I went through and did like four of them last night using the old software. I was plugging them into GHRV. And three out of four of them were not long enough. They weren't even three frames long. One of them was one frame long, and then the other two were two frames long. So, yeah, it, it, that totally makes sense. And then I, I talked to Robert, and he was saying, yeah, Kurt just needs to take longer snippets of the data you send him because we do yeah. take quite a bit of data. Like the, 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 limit, the rate limiting step when we're doing these experiments is the NIBP. So we spend, like, the animal has this, HRV software running in the background for at least 20 minutes. It's just not all of that is good because the leads we use are bad and sometimes I have to move the animal, et cetera. But. Okay. Well, um, you can at least get total approximate and sample entropies using the notebook if GHRV won't generate them for you. Okay. Which is handy. Um, now, you... You're an expert in Python now, so all the way down here at the bottom is a blank space, which allows you to talk to your data directly. So you can, you know, talk to your, um, uh, you can talk to the data that you've generated and try to, you know, get pieces of it um, if you want. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if there's a particular measurement you're interested in using and there's a function that already does it in NumPy or SciPy or Pandas, um, you might be able to call it directly down here. Um, you know, go back and talk to your PI or whomever to try to get an idea of what you're not generating right now to see what those, what those functions might be and we can talk about how you would write code to do that. Oh, cool. That's because, awesome. Yeah, because the data is stored um, in a pretty uh, pretty logical way. I've got stuff um, as pandas data frames. I know that's not in the Code Academy tutorial, but it's um, it's like a really handy way to hold on to data like this. Uh, okay. So it's easy to call stuff. So they're just dictionaries that hold all the data frames where your data lives. Okay. So if you have things that aren't happening right now, but you would like to do them, know that you can access your data directly down here, and we can talk a little bit about how you would do that when you write functions. Because building okay. your own custom functions is super easy. Yeah, that's, it, it seems pretty easy to, to write in this language and, and uh, from the tutorial I was taking, like there's no crazy weird syntax and stuff like there is with C and C++. Well, Python's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Well, all right. Um, is there anything else you think would benefit me? Oh, let me show you how um, how you would do this in the basic notebook if you were totally happy with all your stuff. I'm assuming it's a lot like the old notebook. Yeah, where you type directly into it. Yeah, it just goes straight into the, yeah, which I think I will start using because I became pretty well acquainted with the old one last night. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The basic one. So I'll just show you how I do it or how I would do it if I were you. Okay. So here we go. Um, I've got my notebook, I'm gonna initialize it. It's gonna think a little bit, and here are all, all the things. So I'm gonna go ahead and change where it is um, and where I want it to go, and the name of the file, right, so it grabs the right one. Good. Um, true, we're going to change these to numbers. So high cut is 100, low cut is 30, is 4, linear fit is false, so you don't need to change any of these other ones. Okay. We liked 19 for your Savisky delay. Yep. Um, um. 
So what is unsafe about the old notebook? I, I mean, I know like debugging and, and refining code is always a, a good thing, but what is uh, wrong with the old one? Is it going to get shoddy data? Like, There's a possibility that it might do that because it's over a year old and we've made um, some changes inside how some of these functions run. Mm -hmm. um, and if I remember correctly, there was a point sometime last winter where I found a, I'm not going to say a major error, but a mathematical error in how it was exporting GHRV file, text files. So I'm like 90% sure what it's spitting out for you is not in the correct units. And I don't totally remember what it was or why it was doing it. Um, but I know that I caught it later and I was like, crap. So if you were me and you were sitting on a large data set that was analyzed with that software, would you go through and analyze it with the new software? Yes. Okay. Which is gonna... kind of a bummer, but I know that there's stuff in there that's not correct. And I always want you to have the best data possible, you know? No, I totally agree. That's how I feel too. And um, yeah, so... I'm going to find someone to do that. <laughs> oh. What's up? If you want, you can batch process it. If you can concatenate them all together. What does batch process mean? Forgive my ignorance. Run them all at the same time, all at once, instantly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is what you mentioned uh, the first time we, we talked, how you just input all your values and then you run everything, one, one press, and you're done, right? Yep. And this is too fast, too, so even if you have to load them in one at a time, you're not, you know, weeping into your coffee. Okay. False, true, zero, one. So you have these areas because if not, I never would have talked to you and I never would have found out that we'd have a whole mess of probably bad data. <laughs> I know. That's why I wrote you back and told you it makes me want to cry when I hear you use old things. <laughs> uh, don't generate graphs. That stuff is fine. Okay. All right. So I just manually entered all the settings. They all look like this. It's beautiful. I could yeah. have loaded it in using this one, right? So if I email you this settings file, you can load it in right here by giving the address for in your computer so you don't even have to type it mm -hmm. if you want. And then you just say go. And it just finished in 1.37 seconds. Wow. And so now you can get, you know, here's all the peaks, here are all the bursts, um, here's a line graph, this is what was detected, looks pretty reasonable. Um, Panel. Oh, this one's nice. This gives you um, a before and after, right? So here's your raw data. Oh, yeah. Here's your after data. Cool. If that's something you're interested and, in. And that line going through there, uh, that is that the burst line? or? Yep. Okay, yeah, I thought so. Cool, I'm understanding things. Yeah. Actually, and I'm going to be honest with you, this particular file that you sent me is so clean, you don't need to transform it. You can run this raw through event detection. Really? Because uh, I guess when I, the first time I tried doing that, I didn't understand how to use delta and the parameters. Mm -hmm. But if you think this is clean, you, sh you should see my other three data sets. <laughs> yeah, this is totally clean, mostly because this stuff down here is much lower than you know this mm -hmm. so if you want to run it raw i think that this data set is a good candidate 
Cool. Um, raster. Yeah, so all the other things you were able to do before are all in here. Just run them if you want to. Um, if you get stuck, you can ask for help. So um, if there's a, if I've written documentation for the particular piece of code, it'll show it to you. Um, and you can code right in the bottom. So if you don't want to like fine tinker with all the details every time, you know, and get it to display, mm -hmm. you know, you use the basic notebook. And e even in this one, if you want, um, you know, want to run it and then, uh, you know, look at it using, where did it go? This one, show me the table or show me the two panel, right? You can look at the before and after and decide if it did a good job and then go back and change your settings if you didn't like it. Oh, yeah, direct comparison. I don't have to go flip flop back and forth. Yep. And since you've already entered all your settings up here, changing them is really easy, right? All you have to do is type the new thing you want to do. Yeah, I don't have to scroll for days. That's actually, yeah, this is actually really great. <laughs> Ta -da. Um, so just the, the last recap, that CSV file with the information that I need to put into a text file in case I do want to run this through GHRV just to, I, I will probably run everything I can through this program, but uh, just in case. I'm totally familiar, I will probably want to run this through GHRV since that is the old way. Uh -huh. What you'll do is you'll open uh, peak results, which is where the RR intervals live. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to give it the time column, which tells it where each event happened, which is what it needs in order to make that graph. Okay, and which, I'm sorry, which, which file was this one? Which CSV file? What is the name? Results. Peak results? Mm -hmm. Okay, peak results. Peak results, take the time column. Uh, just copy paste that into a new notepad.txt and load that up through GHRV and we're good to go. Theoretically. If it doesn't work, I seem to remember that sometimes GHRV gets finicky about times that don't start at zero, so you may have to shift your data as if it always starts at zero. Is that Navi? Yeah, that's my text noise. <laughs> Um, so can you say that again about starting at zero? So yeah, sometimes GHRV gets finicky if your time doesn't start at zero. So you'll have to like shift your whole data over as if it did start at zero. So like what I would do is um, I would make, you know, like a new column. Oh, wait, I'll do it over here. Make a new column and say... Uh, this number minus 68.135. Yeah, always minus this number. Right. Right, always minus the first one. Yeah, that's what the dollar sign is, right? Always. Yeah. Okay. And then. Okay, that's easy. Yeah, and then it'll shift it for you. I think there's a faster way to fill. I just don't remember what the hotkey is right now. And then you can, you know, copy this into a new sheet as only the values, and then save as a text. There it is. That's great. Yeah. Yep. If that's something you want to do. Probably in the beginning, just in case, once I get confident with everything and I can explain this to my PA. I mean, you see, the thing is, my PA is not going to understand any of this. She's just going to hear, we can't do it this way anymore and freak out. So, <laughs> uh, Depending on how much panic it can cause, you can tell her that the developer told you that the old notebook was secretly broken the whole time and you should super never use it again. It, which is exactly what I'm going to tell her. So, All right, Abby. Um, I... I have some other work I got to get to here. So Same. I got another conference call in 10 minutes. So, All right. well, this was fun. Thank uh, you. I really appreciate your time. It's you're welcome. I'll uh, send you a link to this recording so that you can watch it every day for forever. Okay. And, um,
your settings. Uh, yes. I can actually just send you everything we just generated. It's pretty tiny um, so that you Perfect. can have some. Perfect. Okay. You have a good day. You too. All right. Bye.